Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Just first of all, can you all hear me? Yes, good. Okay, that's the important thing. Okay, well, first of all, just correction. I wasn't forced to resign, and that's what the left-wing media says, okay? I founded the party. I owned all the shares. Um, I gave my shares to Nigel. I handed them over. I had complete control. So um, that was, again, described... Um, as a way, and in fact, I mean, the way that I got portrayed was um, that I had made a few tweets out of 4,000, and basically I was taken to pieces by The Guardian. And I wanted Nigel to have a chance, and so I offered to give up my shares. Um, I'm not going to be too long, because I know you've had a very, very long day, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit about immigration, and then I'm going to talk about the political situation that we have here in Britain right now. Um, so, let me start. I mean, I want to ask you, first of all, why did you all come here? What made you come today? Why have you spent the whole day here? Yes, exactly, for regulatory alignment of kettles. That's why we came here. No, of course we didn't. We came because we think something's going terribly wrong. And, um, I mean, I don't know what it makes you feel, but when I've just signed my tax cheque and I then hear that a Somali family's just been given a £2 million house in Clerkenwell, what does it make you feel? When you find out that somebody on a post-tax benefit system's got half a million pounds, what does it make you feel? Well, I'll tell you what it makes me feel. It makes me feel angry and it makes me feel that it's not fair not fair. And that, I think, is what the left doesn't understand and Corbyn doesn't understand. This is not about equality. It's about fairness. And we think things that are happening are not fair. That's the first thing I'm going to say. Um, I mean, I look around me and I ask people, how did you get here? What basis are you here? I mean, my, my, my children have a Nepalese father and his brother, this was the first time I became aware of the immigration issue, was when, he, when my husband's brother um, arrived on a tourist visa and then overstayed his visa. And the next thing I knew, he'd got a British passport. And I said to my husband, well, how did he get a British passport? He's Nepalese. And it was sort of, ah, well, you know, um, 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 well, he threw away his passport and he claimed asylum as a Tibetan. Now, he's actually a Sherpa and you would know in a five-minute language test that he wasn't a Tibetan. And that was the first time in about 2004 that I realized we had a problem, a big problem. And I wrote to the Home Office and, of course, didn't get an answer. And what happens is that one person works out how to do something and then everybody does it. So you have every Nepalese in Britain arrives on a tourist visa and, or a Sherpa and they know that they can get it, become asylum. And, and this morning somebody talked about repatriation. Well, how are you going to repatriate? I mean, how are you going to do it if somebody doesn't have any papers? How are you even going to decide their nationality? This is the problem that we're facing. We have people who we don't know whose nationality they are. We don't, and then we have the issue that countries don't want to take them back either. So Nepal's not going to take this guy back, who's theoretically a Tibetan, and the Tibetans can go, we can imagine what the Chinese are going to say about it. So this is the sort of mess we've got. And, you know, and, and it, it annoys people when you have working class families in Blackburn or Liverpool or whatever, and they can't get on the council house queue, that their children are literally, as Obama said, put to the back of the queue. And people are getting very, very upset about it. Immigration is the big hot potato. It is such a big hot potato that nobody will talk about it. Even Nigel Farage will not talk about it. I mean, I am shocked at where Nigel's got to. I like Nigel very much, but he will not. First of all, he wouldn't talk about Islam. Then he wouldn't talk about race. And now he won't talk about immigration and have no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. The Brexit party now is not a right-wing party. It is a Marxist party. <laughs> Thank you.
We have had Brexit Party MEPs in the last couple of weeks tweeting that they would like to support Majid Majid. Do you know who Majid Majid is? Yes, well, he's the green Somali ex-mayor of Sheffield who a, is a green. And he has been tweeting that we should give money to migrant rescue charities. And many of the Brexit Party, including the chairman, Richard Tice, thought this was a very good idea. Well, I don't think it's a good idea. And that's why I won't support the Brexit Party. I mean, it is really catastrophic what's happened. I, with Nigel, formed a strategy which we thought was a good strategy at the time to unite the left and the right. And I brought in some of the spiked people. Of course, one of them is Claire Fox. And just last week, you know, Boris has started to produce some really quite good policies. He's soft on migration. We know that. But at least he's started. We've had Priti Patel talking about ISIS brides. We've had people talking about voter ID. And we had spiked in the Brexit party and Claire Fox saying that they thought voter ID was a bad idea. It's not. It's essential. We will have no democracy left if we can't get control of our voting system. I mean, the country is a mess. I wrote an article in Shy Society about English heritage. I mean, presumably English heritage would support English heritage. Oh no, it has its program that only accepts BAME, Black, Asian, and men, ethnic minorities. Now, I have two mixed race children, and I wrote an article, and I asked English heritage, and I wrote to Princess Anne's husband, who's the chair. And I said, so how would you define who's BAME? For example, if I have one child with a white man, they're not BAME. And supposing they've got 11 or 12 A stars at GCSE and A levels and whatever, and I have one child who's got no qualifications but it's got a bit of melatonin in them, then I presume you'll take the one with a bit of melatonin. And how do you define this? I mean, my daughter is very English. She's got a lovely English name. But if her name is Charlotte, at Blakelock, I presume you reject her. But if her name is Zhang Mu Sherpa, you'll take her. And if she's got a suntan, then she looks Indian or Spanish. But if she doesn't have a suntan, she looks English. So how are you defining this? Well, and then eventually I got a letter back. Can you guess how they define whether you're an ethnic minority? Self-defined. Okay, so I'm six foot six and black Jamaican, okay? Yeah, right. So, I mean, we have now got, we've been talking about migration, and, you know, we, we, we don't know what an English person is, we don't know what a British person is. We know instinctively what they are, but we don't know. And when the left call me racist, I say to this to them, I lived in Singapore for a long time, I have friends who live in Singapore, I could speak fluent Mandarin, I could have children in Singapore, I could live there 30 years, I could have a piece of paper that says I'm Chinese. But am I Chinese? Do I look Chinese? And of course they have to answer, no, you don't. So we all instinctively know what we're talking about, but we can't say it. Okay, so we have, you know, these situations where you go to the Santander Bank and you see a woman in a burqa waving a British passport and she says, are you Pakistani as well to the cashier? And, we know, and then the cashier gets embarrassed. We just don't know what we're talking about. We're defining British as a piece of paper. We now have 10 million people in this country who are born abroad. That means that they have eligibility for two passports. The only people in my family who don't have an eligibility for two passports is me. My ex-husband has a Nepalese passport. He's now able to have chain migration in and marry another wife and another one and another one. But, and my children, of course, would be eligible for Nepalese passports, but I'm not. I'm the only one who isn't. It's the native mugs who are the ones without the passports. And this situation is unsustainable. We have nobody, no party in this country now that will deal with the issue that affects 65, 65 percent of people. This is more than the Brexiteers think that immigration is the number one problem. Only 35 percent of people now think that it's got any positivity. 
That's, but Boris won't talk about it. The Brexit party won't talk about it. You can't be, if you talk about immigration and you go to a Brexit party, um, you won't get through. UKIP went off on the deep end on, migra on, on Muslim Islam. And Islam is just a subset of migration. If you don't control your borders, it doesn't really matter. You've got to get control, and you can't. So they and, and today they're having they're also falling apart. They've just fired their uh, the NEC's got rid of their leader Richard Bray. So they are a mess. We've got splits all over the place. We've got Tommy Robinson. We've got Anne Marie Waters. Um, we've got Katie out there. I think she spoke last year. We've got Robin Holbrook from the English Democrats, uh, Western De Democrats and veterans, they won two council seats. But it's just a whole great split. I mean, what was going on in UKIP was basically the Nigel and Gerard show, which then became the, the uh, Tommy Robinson and the rest of them show. So, you know, this is why we're not really getting anywhere. Um, so that, that's, where we, that's where we are. I'm just going to... Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, conti we, we continue to have millions of people, as we know and we've heard of, who actually think that they're living in the Congo or Pakistan. They, they, get in, they, they go to work, but they come home and they, they go into their homes, and their homes are Pakistan. They're not Britain. Um, and what we're creating with this is complete ungovernability. We heard a little bit about that from the AFD man. You know, I will take the example of Nepal because it's a nice example. We don't have 200 languages in this country. Newham itself advertises that it's got something like 400 languages. But Sherpa won't be on that list. We probably have over a thousand languages. And Nepal's a good example because it's got, seven, it's got 30 million people. It's a tiny country. But it's got 70 groups. And what we don't realize is when we import people, we're importing other hatreds, other ethnicities, other class system, all of whom don't get. And so we, we end up, we're going to end up with proxy wars on our land. We've already seen that with India and Pakistan just recently. Proxy wars between Shias and Sunnis on our land. And I don't know how we're going to resolve this. I, I have very, very gloomy prognosis for what is going to happen um, because we, we don't seem to be able to stop it. We're not even making a, a start at actually stopping it. Um, I, was, I mean, I'll give you another example of the Brexit party. I was in Peterborough for the by-election um, and they wouldn't mention immigration. I mean, Peterborough has changed out of all recognition in 90, I think around 1995. 95% of all teenagers identified as white British. Now there's 12 mosques, there are schools with 50 languages, and the Brexit party would not answer a single question about the elephant that was in that room. And that is an elephant that isn't just in, your, in here, it's out there. It's big. It's across the political spectrum, and it's the one thing that we have a massive political hole. I mean, I have considered, and I'm talking to Katie Hopkins about forming a Another party, which is a single purpose party. Because Brexit, unfortunately, is not going to solve it. I know Boris today has lost the vote, but Brexit can actually make things worse. It can make, it can make things worse. It, it really can make things worse. The reason that Brexit can make things worse is that there are two reasons. The first reason is we, we have strong borders on, on our Eastern European front and we have the European Union has to a large extent controlled migration across the Mediterranean with camps in Libya, which we don't hear much about it, but they have done something about that. And there is a right wing element in Europe, which is more than here. So the first thing is that we could have immigration coming through other methods um, without that control. If we get a Labour, Corbyn, Abbott government, God knows what it will be like. But the other issue is this, is that everybody goes on about the point system. Boris goes on about it, UKIP goes on about it, uh, Brexit party, as though this is a panacea. I mean, is it? Is this just about whether they are a doctor? I mean, if they're an ISIS doctor, does that really help us or not? <laughs> it does, we know. And of course, what we're going to do after we get out of the European Union is we're going to replace Eastern European labor with maybe Somali or Nigerian or Indian or wherever. So we can actually make the problem worse. And the, the other thing I would say about this is this isn't actually about immigration. It's about passports. 
if we had done what Singapore and China do, and most Asian countries do, we wouldn't have this problem. I worked in Singapore for a long time. I haven't got a passport. You can work there for 20 years, you won't get a passport. China issues less passports in a year than we issue in an afternoon. It understands that passports are everything. Singapore, Dubai, China have lots of migrant labor, but they don't give out control. And, you know, and, the, and then the other thing is, even if we're going to talk about this, is how are we going to define um, nationality? I mean, do we find it by blood? Do we I mean, if we define by blood, how do we define it? Because the Jamaicans have a nice expression, which says, mama's baby, papa's maybe. And, you know, 15% of children are not always papas. Um, do we define it by the mother, by the father, by a bit of both? Do we allow it to go through grandparents? Do we define it by whether we were born here on this soil? We don't know. The Germans used to run a system where, you know, you could be in Namibia for three generations and never have been to Germany, but you were still German, whereas the guest workers were not. Of course, that's all changed. But, you know, we, we can't even talk about this at the moment, let alone try to solve it. We aren't even at a, at a you know, with 300,000 net, but six or 700, 800,000 national insurance numbers issued. I mean, goodness, these are like two or three cities that we are, we, are, we will never solve any other problem. We won't solve housing or roads or NHS or the balance of payments or the, the rest of it. Just looking at the financial, we have a massive current account deficit. And if we add the foreign aid budget and the remittances that migrants send out, we come to the current account deficit. I know how to do it. You take the money to a place in, um, in Harrow, and the next minute that cash appears in Nepal. It's simple. Millions and millions of trillions of pounds, at least billions of pounds, are being moved out of the country all the time. That is our current account deficit. And when that money goes out, that's effectively an import. We have effectively imported a good. That's the economic situation. So, you know, I, um, I'm not very confident about it. What I do think is that, um, that, you know, Brexit isn't going to be the solution and that we have a number of looming crises. I think we will open up a political vacuum. I don't know how it's going to be solved. But what we must do, all of us, we have to be brave and we have to stand up. And we, as the other people said, we must not apologize. We must keep going. People like Katie Hopkins, she can't basically go shopping. I went to see Tommy Robinson in jail. You know, I would imagine that at some point I could be arrested. I'm aware today of my speech and what I wanted to say in case I was. Because that is where we are. We are. Um, and I think this vacuum, we're, you know, I, I still at this point think we, we have to vote for the Conservatives. Sadly, because of our political system, I think we can be the last to change. Because small parties just can't get anywhere. And if you've got a choice between Boris or Corbyn, it's obvious. You have to support Boris, even though he's, he's, you know, he's, he's a liberal in lots of ways. Anyway, I'm going to finish because I know it's been a long day. Um, but you know, all I can say is that I would vote. I, I by the way, am now not allowed to be in, in for all three parties. The Brexit party doesn't want me because I talk about things they don't want to talk about. Batten doesn't want me because I, I um, started the Brexit party. And the Conservatives chucked me out even though the local lot had me. So I'm politically homeless again. Thank you.